Welcome into the Odds and Audibles podcast. Matt Prem, Eric Scopel, Jared Mack on the show today. Welcome to your Thursday when we were recording this podcast. It's an off day for the Oregon Duck football program. No media, no practice. I'm sure they're inside doing some rehab, but we figured we'd take this time to uh, dive into some Big Ten Oregon discussion. We decided to talk about some things we're excited to see play out along the Big Ten, as well as... Uh, Oregon, Oregon State, do they continue playing? Um, a bunch of discussion points for this podcast. Uh, Big Ten is kind of the news of probably the next few months for the University of Oregon and Washington and the rest of college football. Um, guys, let's start off with who becomes Oregon's next like pseudo rival among the Big Ten teams. Um we should say this doesn't include USC, UCLA, or Washington because naturally Oregon versus Washington will be the big one in conference. Oregon versus USC is always kind of like a, a rivalry game now. But who becomes that like new Oregon versus blank that replicates what USC has become? Well, I had a couple answers. And, you know, the way I thought about this is, is maybe different than how you guys are. But I, I think you need on field examples where the teams compete and there is something on the line and, and maybe there is some bad blood based upon outcome. And so yeah. based upon the last 10 years or so, there's really only two schools from the Big Ten. Oregon has played multiple times and only two where there's been like on, on big stages, I think, you know. So I, I, I came down to Ohio State versus Wisconsin in terms of the choices. Um, I mean, in terms of what the history is, Ohio State beat Oregon in a Rose Bowl not long ago. They beat Oregon for a national championship shortly after that. Um, two of Oregon's, I would say, best seasons of the last 15 years ended with Ohio State losses in big games Oregon desperately wanted to win, obviously trying to win a national championship. That stung. Oregon fans won't forget that, right? They'll enter the conference with that in the back of their mind. And then in 2021, Oregon went to Columbus and ended a long-standing home win streak for Ohio State. I don't have the number in front of me, but it was, I think, three or four years worth of uh, uh, perfect home records. So there's the Ohio State angle of, hey, Oregon ended this rivalry. Obviously, Ohio State has had the upper hand historically. Their, their games were on bigger moments that they won over Oregon. But I, I think that kind of sets up something there. And then Oregon-Wisconsin, the two Rose Bowls that Oregon won over the last uh 12 years or so, one over Russell Wilson, the second over Jonathan Taylor. These are big names that Oregon was able to beat in big environments. Um, so I think those are the two that I kind of came down to. And I ended up going with the Buckeyes just because I also think Oregon will wind up being more recruiting foes with Ohio State than with Wisconsin. I think, obviously, if we're just talking about where they enter from a football team perspective, Ohio State is a tier above Oregon on my mind. And I think Oregon and Wisconsin are closer together in terms of being at the same tier right now. But I do think Oregon and Ohio State, just based upon recruiting, will bump heads a little bit more, and, and maybe they've had a little bit more recent uh, meeting. So I, I went Buckeyes, but I think those are the two where, where I landed. I thought Ohio State was too easy of a pick. I wanted sure. something out of the box. I wanted like Oregon and, and Washington State during the Mike Leach years, where for some reason there was a rivalry. Um, and, you know, I thought long and hard, I, I'm reading what I wrote here. I thought long and hard about like Minnesota or Illinois, just like a random team in the Big Ten that's going to give Oregon trouble a late Saturday night or an early Saturday morning, depending on when they play the game. Ultimately, I decided to go with a team that I think is just going to be uh, a, a rival just off of, of multiple sports and specifically more off of football. But I went with Penn State. Um, I think Penn State is, uh, a, a, I think it's a pretty good answer, A, because I said it, but B, because I think that there are very similar tiers. Uh, and like like Eric said with the Wisconsin factor, I don't think Oregon is among the elites in the Big Ten. I don't think I'm going out on a limb and saying that. Um, I'm sure people will absolutely disagree with me, and that's fine. But, uh, you know, they're not up to the, the level of standard that Ohio State and Michigan have had over time, and then Ohio State and Michigan have had over the last couple of years. But Penn State's right about there. Penn State, Wisconsin, um, I think USC is probably in that group as of now, um, but they might be in the top tier. Who knows? I think Penn State's an easy matchup. I think those are the two of the best atmospheres in college football. When you look at Death Valley or Beaver Stadium, whatever you want to call it, and then Autzen Stadium here on the West Coast, um, I think whenever they have a home-and-home, 
or if one goes there, I think those are going to be excellent games. Um, I think the programs are similar levels. Um, I think James Franklin is a great head coach. I think that they all they both recruit elite levels. They're not at the elite level of Ohio State or Georgia or Alabama, but they're that tier below. Um, I think they both had a lot of recent success. They've had a couple Rose Bowl victories or Rose Bowl appearances in recent years. Um, I think that that's just kind of like the – like it feels like Penn State is the Oregon of the mm-hmm. Big Ten. Yeah, um, that's fair. Mostly because the Pac-12 hasn't had a team that can com- compete for a championship every year like Ohio State and Michigan. But um, if there were no Ohio State or Michigan in the Big Ten, uh, Penn State would be one of those better programs, one of those teams that goes on to a New Year's Six game. And if they don't, you're kind of surprised by it. It'd be the Oregon of the Pac-12. So I think that they're just going to meet up and line up. but. Some way, somehow, I do want a rivalry with like Minnesota or <laughs> Illinois or Maryland, maybe Indiana in football, maybe like the curse of Michael Penix reigns, something like that. So, Jared, don't you think Brett Bielma is going to be really easy to dislike too? So that maybe he Illinois is. Is, the, is the natural answer. Uh, it's a pa- Patriot coach legend, Brett Bielma. So, <laughs> oh, all right, sorry, I'm sorry. Not hate him. <laughs> My apologies. My apologies. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, because I made the question, I cheated. I gave two answers. Um, and one of them Ooh. is Ohio State. And I, I I I said this because they'll become what USC has always been. Like I I always go back to a comment that um this is changing sports, but Dana Altman says like when he first got to Oregon, he looked at UCLA and looked at Arizona and said, Those are the standard bearers of the conference. That's what we're competing against from the standard. We need to surpass that. That's what Ohio State is from a football standpoint. Um, now the true rivalry game, I think will be Wisconsin. Um, I think they play there. They are a brand of football. That's probably better than what Stanford is in its heyday. And that Stanford versus Oregon game. in like the early 2010s mm-hmm. was always intense, was always evenly matched. Um, they always gave Oregon fits. They played a weird style of football. That's what Wisconsin does. Um, there's history there between these two schools that played in the Rose Bowl a couple times. Morgan's beaten them a couple times in the Rose Bowl. Um, I, I think that game will be one in which um, there'll be some, I don't know if true like hatred will, will pop up with this one, but there'll definitely be a rivalry game. I bet you there'll be some games where you go in thinking Oregon should never lose this game because they have a way more talented recruiting class. And yet somehow, Heartbreak City happens and Wisconsin kind of ruins the season for Oregon. I bet you that happens as well. I do agree with Jared, though, that Oregon won't be one of the top brands or programs in the Big Ten right away. It'll take some time for Oregon to build itself up to that level, if they even do, you know, on a consistent basis. I, I, I don't I don't know that if that's going to guarantee to happen. All right. Uh, stadium. What football stadium? Um, among the current big ten, big 10 schools, the original OGs. How do we call these guys? Like the OGs? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the original 10, 14, 16. <laughs> it, okay. It, I, I'm still, I'm still bothered by how bad at math we are with this conference. Cause there's, it hasn't been 10 schools since Jared, you might've never been alive when it was 10, actually 10 schools. <laughs> like now that I'm thinking about it, I think I was like seven years old when Maybe it went not. to, when it went to expanded. So weird. <laughs> All right, what, what stadium are you looking forward to most seeing from an away game perspective? I think there were like four that I really thought hard on. Like that's the cool thing about the Big Ten. And and, and frankly, like the Pac-12 had some great venues, but the atmosphere, I think, for almost all of these surpasses just because of the fan excitement, which is I think a really big part of this. So I the four I was looking at, um, Beaver Stadium, Penn State. Uh, you know, we just went to the horseshoe. Obviously, there's the big house with with Michigan and then Camp Randall for Wisconsin. Like those are the four that just kind of like jumped out to me that I kind of gave some thought. I'm ultimately going um, with Happy Valley with Beaver Stadium, which I guess I guess will if, if, or, if, if Oregon and Penn State does become the rivalry, maybe there will be a little duck beaver built into it just because of the name of the stadium. I don't know. Um, but like having watched those games on television, like I've really admired, especially the whiteout nights in Happy Valley. I'm hoping that Oregon gets to play in numerous of those over the course of the next couple of decades. Um, like I know that maybe it doesn't quite share the same reverence as, you know, the horseshoe, the big house, just because those maybe are a little bit more 
storied, but gosh, like it looks really, really fun over there. So that's, that's, I think to me where I landed, even though I think it's going to be, I mean, I'll say, I guess this is part of one of the last questions we, we get to about things we're looking forward to as well, but like, it's going to be really fun to check out all these new venues. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to go to every one of the Pac-12 venues covering Oregon football over the last um, half decade or so. I have only been to Ohio State among those that are in these OG or whatever we're just having to term those schools. So there's a going to be a ton of new stadiums and venues that I, I'll be really excited to check out. But I think I think going to Penn State will probably be the one that tops my list. I had I had basically like a one A one B. My one A was the Big House in Michigan. My one B was Penn State. Um, I like like Eric kind of ended his uh, his portion with like I don't think there's a lot of wrong answers here except for maybe like Rutgers, um, <laughs> Indiana. Um, you know, uh, but I, I, for me it was Michigan. Michigan was the one A. Um, the Big House is just one of college football's greatest venues. And it's been a long time since Oregon has gone there. I think early 2000s um, was the last time that they were there. Um, and it's one of the places everybody wants to go to. Um, I have been to the big house. I've not seen a game there. I've toured Michigan's campus. It's a beautiful place. Um, I can't wait to go eventually. Um, if whenever Oregon decides to go to Michigan, uh, and I think the big house just, you know, it's going to be like 112, 113,000 fans. Uh, Oregon fans who do make the trip out are never going to have seen something like this before other than a fully loaded Rose Bowl. And even still, there's like 10 to 12,000 more fans in Michigan than there is at the Rose Bowl. So um, I just think it's a completely different venue. And for for Penn State, yeah, the, the whiteout game, it's bound to happen. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if that's one of Oregon's first games in the Big Ten. Um, I kind of have the impression that uh, Oregon's home slate in the Big Ten is going to be really bad, but their away slate that they'll probably travel to all the big name schools and to show all the Big Ten members like, hey, we're Oregon, um, whether for good or not, because Oregon won't have a quarterback for that season. But um, I still think that it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think that Michigan is my clear answer. Uh, I've always wanted to go to a game there too. So maybe it's a little selfish on my end, um, having been to the horseshoe a couple of years ago, but uh, yeah, no, I'm going to go Michigan, but uh, I, there's, there's so many options. Nebraska is another one that I thought about Memorial stadium in Lincoln. Um, I mean, Tony Tuyote and Casey Rogers talked about that place. Like it was, I don't know. Like it's that's pretty cool. They, I've been, I've been there. It was in two, 2016 and yeah. It it that, it was raucous even then for a team that wasn't very good for Wisconsin. Yeah, no, it's a it's a f fantastic fan base. It's one of the best in the country, and they travel. They traveled to Autzen a couple of years ago. They mm -hmm. certainly know how to do it right. So, and, but there's a bunch of those fan bases in the Big Ten. So, there's not really a bad answer, unlike the two schools I mentioned earlier. But um, yeah, Penn State, Michigan, Michigan number one. Like like Jared, I went um, Beaver Stadium. For Penn State, I, I think the whiteout. I, I tried to pick a place that the fans probably haven't been, even though like I haven't been to the Big House, um, I haven't been to Camp Randall. I think Camp Randall and and seeing the jump around will be awesome, will be mm -hmm. exhilarating to see. Um, I tried to pick a place that you know Oregon hasn't played in for basically the modern era of college football. Maybe if I'm wrong, I don't know Oregon's history. On the way perspective, but I can't remember. They've, uh, they've never played playing. At, they've never played there at Penn State. Yeah. yeah. So I, I went with Beaver Stadium. The whiteout's going to be tremendous. I hope it's like a mid October, <laughs> six p.m. local time, seven p.m. local time game where you wait all night. Uh, you you get one hundred ten thousand people in white t-shirts. And by the way, what does Oregon do if they go to? I was Penn thinking State? about that. Because this yeah. is the move. This mm. is 100% the move by Penn State. You go white out. Oregon can't wear their white uniforms. Mm. No, yeah. That's a good point. I was thinking about that because it's it's a genuine concern because there's there are a lot of teams that wear white at home traditionally yeah. in the Big yes. Ten as a traditional conference. So I don't know what Oregon's going to do. The the good news is Oregon has a lot of uniform combinations. I think they'll figure <laughs> something out. I think they but got I, something in the closet. Just maybe, man. I do I do love those kind of stormtrooper looks when they go on the road yes. sometimes. Not being mm -hmm. able to yeah, that'll be it's too bad. 
All right. Oregon versus Oregon State. The Ducks have come out. They have said that they want to play. Uh, Oregon State side from the administration has said, well, we'll pump the brakes. We'll see. We've got to figure this out. Uh, the Oregon State fan base has made it very clear. They do not want to play Oregon in anything moving forward, which I think is really weird. Um, I get it. Should this rivalry continue? I, I, the, the easy answer is yes, but like, do we think – I guess maybe let's change it. Like, Because we all said yes. I'm not going to – Yeah. We, we're all going to relay the same things. Do we think it will? Quick audible here. Yeah. No, I mean – and the reason I said I get it is like I, it, the perspective is not really rational in my opinion coming from Oregon State because it's it's almost suggesting that Oregon was the you know was the culprit who stuck the knife in the back of the remaining schools. I don't think based on any reporting I've seen that that's exactly what took place. In fact, it seems like based upon recent reporting over the last twenty four hours, like Oregon was actually kind of more into the Apple deal than maybe people had previously let on, and maybe they were kind of not only say tagged along with Washington, but that maybe they were a little bit more interested. Um, but regardless of any of that, like I, I do think ultimately there will be rivalry games played. Um, Oregon wants to do it. Oregon State should want to play this game. Um, I mean, I, I honestly, I've, I've made this couple, point a couple of mm-hmm. times. I don't know if I've done it on the podcast, but I think Oregon State has more to lose by not playing this game than, than Oregon does. Um, you know, Oregon State will play in whatever conference it's going to be in. I don't. There's no clarity of exactly what that looks like, but I can guarantee you that conference won't feature many brands as big as Oregon's. And so, facing Oregon, if whether that's in September, whether they're able to maintain a Thanksgiving um, rivalry date that they have for the last decade or so, um, or more, or whatever it is. Um, I don't know, but regardless, that's going to be a game that Oregon State can put on its schedule that will garner a ton of attention, um, that will sell a lot of tickets when it's at Reeser, and that will potentially, if they are as good as they think they're going to be, and I think they can be very competitive in, in whatever league they're in. I mean, this is the team that, coming off a 10-win season, they just beat Oregon. Let's not ignore that fact. Like, I think Oregon State can be a pretty darn good football program at whatever level they're playing. But that could be a game that could seal, you know, based upon whatever this new college football playoff format looks like, that could be a game that decides Oregon State's fate for trying to make a run at something. Like if they have one loss and it's mm-hmm. that November game, like maybe it comes down to can they beat their rival for it? Like I would think that would be something that they would ultimately want. So um, I think it ultimately does happen, but it's going to come with a lot of belly aching, I think, because I do think. Again, I don't find the perspective, the perspective to be totally rational. I guess I, I kind of get it when you get left at the altar almost like this. But um, I think ultimately it's going to end up happening. Yeah, I, I think it should happen. Um, I agree with you, Eric. I don't understand why Oregon State fans are upset at Oregon or why Washington State fans, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because this is a fundamental and foundational problem that the Pac-12 have. It wasn't one team stabbing in the back. And some Oregon fans will say, before Oregon went to the Big Ten, will say that USC and UCLA uh, were the ones to to hold the knife. But no, this is a a total problem by the Pac-12 conference. So if there's anybody to blame, you can blame the president, you can blame George, you can blame – you really should honestly just blame Larry Scott for all of this. And that's an easy given or it's an easy out, so might as well take it. But but yeah, no, Eric, you're right. If Oregon State – Oregon State needs to play Oregon. I think it's as simple as that. Um, that's going to be, depending on what conference Oregon State eventually lands in, it's going to be difficult financially for a lot of these teams. And bringing in Oregon or going to Oregon, that will at least produce money. And you know, I know that people don't want to hear that it's all about money, but for the last year and a half, it's always been about money. So there we go. Um and that's going to be a moneymaker for Oregon State. Uh, they, I don't know if you guys saw, but they just recently, you know, opened their the the new uh, extension onto Reeser. Um, Bad timing. Somehow, somehow that needs to be paid for. Uh, and a trip to Oregon or Oregon to 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 Corvallis might actually help that. Um, so I think that they're going to kind of sit, complain, moan uh, about this for the next couple of weeks, and then they're going to figure it out. I you know this is kind of just what's going to happen. Um, other teams and other conferences that have changed have figured it out with really no problems. Like Florida and Florida State have been playing basically every year for the last 
however long Florida State and, and Florida have been in the SEC and the ACC. Um, I know Oklahoma and Texas, obviously, they moved to the SEC together, but that's going to be fine. But Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are going to play. Um, schools figure this out. And if, if you remember anything about the COVID season, it's that these schools can schedule games in less than 36 hours. So, I, I you know, we have a whole year here for people to figure out how to schedule a game. Um, I'm not overly concerned. Oregon's going to have a lot of non-conference scheduling open up after, you know, Michigan State can't play, Ohio State, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, no, this is going to happen. It should happen. And I don't know why people are – maybe against it or bemoaning Oregon's decision just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, first of all, both schools are going to have to, from a football perspective, they're going to have to buy out some non-conference games or the easy solution is Oregon state joins the mountain West conference, which turns some previously scheduled games against the mountain West into league games, which could then be moved to later dates, which opens up, um, a scheduling hole for, for both schools. Um, both teams are kind of locked in for a while for the next five or six years. So if they want to play, they have to get past that first, but if they want to play, then they need to buy out some games. Um, so we could, we could see, you know, Oregon, like Jerry just said, like Oregon state's going to be strapped for cash. They're not going to have a lot of money to just, say, hey, we're going to buy out this game for $1.2 million so that we could then play Oregon and only get an away game or what have you. Like that, That's going to be difficult to accomplish. I think it will at some point come back. Uh, to Jared's point, I agree. Like Oregon State's going to need these games, whether it's a football game, whether it's a basketball game or a baseball game, to help fill the stadium to get that money because when that – Game, when Oregon comes to town, that's going to be the, the game of the year even more uh, than it is now. Um, I do think it will happen. It will take some time. I think we could see a couple of years where they don't play, at least on the football field. Um, and if I'm Oregon, you hold all the leverage here because and – I, and I hope Oregon doesn't put themselves in a position where it's, you know, hey, we'll give you a discounted rate or, hey, we'll go two for one. I think they, they would ever do that you know, two, two away games for one home game type of a thing. Uh, if Oregon State's going to try and, and hold Oregon hostage up, well, we're not going to play unless you give us three times the rate or if or if you give us two home games for every home game you get, like Oregon should just walk away. Like that would suck, mm -hmm. but Oregon should just walk away. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll dive into some non-football discussion points um, around the Oregon's move to the Big Ten. All right, welcome back to the Yachts and Audible's podcast. Guys, let's shift to the hardwood here. Um, the Big Ten is a storied program on the basketball court as well as the football field. What basketball venue are you excited to see Oregon play, men and or women? Most likely for me, it would be women. So I don't know if that changes anything, but I'm kind of still going with the same answer, which is Assembly Hall. I, I think for a while that's been my choice as somebody who hasn't, again, to the point I made earlier about football venues, it's the same for me with basketball venues. I haven't really been to too many arenas outside of the Pac-12 footprint. Um, and so I've always loved watching Indiana. I've always kind of, I don't know, Indiana's kind of been my Big Ten basketball team. I don't know if people have that kind of a deal where you pick a school from a different conference that you just kind of root for. Indiana's kind of been that for me. Oregon and Indiana, I don't think really have much of a shared basketball history, by the way. I know that I think Indiana played the women in the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago when Sabrina was here, but I can't think of a whole lot of shared meetings between these schools. But I, I, I've, al I've always admired that um, atmosphere. I think it's a, a, a really cool looking venue. Um, I, have it, I wrote in my notes here, uh, I'm excited to see those red and white striped warm up pants. I know that there are some, there are some overalls that match as well that you'll see in the student section. Like, there's just a lot of kind of cool little elements to that particular venue. And again, as somebody who went to Gonzaga where they, were, they prided themselves on having a really top tier atmosphere, um, and, and I won't take anything away from the pit crew at Oregon either, but just being around fan bases where they really prioritize um, atmospheres for their basketball venues like it stands out and it's impressive and there 
are venues certainly in the Pac-12 that match that, but there are going to be some in the Big Ten that surpass it. And I think one of those will be Assembly Hall. So I'm, I'm, I am I'm put that down, I guess, as just a women's basketball fan. Um, I'd love to see Caitlin Clark play at Iowa. I like to say, I mean, Oregon would get absolutely trashed this year and she only has one more year of eligibility. So it'd be a one year answer and they're not playing in the Big Ten. But in an ideal world, I'd love to see how that because I've seen how Sabrina was received at, at the University of Oregon. I'd love to see what that looks like um, at Iowa with Caitlin Clark, because I know how special she is to that community, too. That would be cool. I'm sure Ames, the town, loves her. And Has just to be. Would, do, would probably do anything for her. Um, I went with you, the I, same answer as Eric. I was just going to say, no, you, no, no, you remember how many Sabrina Nescu jerseys we saw around town when she was here? I bet you there's a Caitlin lot. Clark. They, they did, Caitlin Clark well, they didn't everywhere. sell them for a while. And then right. the, the fan base was like, what the hell, guys? We need these. Why is there not a fake Sabrina Nescu jersey with the number 20 on the back? Yeah, um, yeah no, I, I went with Assembly Hall, as Eric did. Um, just program and tradition. Uh, you know, that's one of the meccas of college basketball um, right up there with Cameron Indoor Stadium at Duke, the Dean Dome at UNC. Uh, the, then the Big Ten obviously has a lot of great basketball courts. Um, Michigan State's obviously another one, but I don't think anything really compares to Indiana. Um, you know, that's been as famous as it can be for the last, I don't know, what is it, 2023, last 50 years, 60 years. Um, and so it'd just be tremendous to go there I, I think it would be a one-of-a-kind experience um i don't i don't think i've really ever been to a big 10 basketball arena so uh any one of them would be would be new for me so um that would be the number one pick though if i had a draft that's easily the number one pick um yeah no not too much to say about it i'm trying to think i have never been to a big 10 stadium as well or arena for basketball i went with a different pick um, I don't know if I went just because to be different or not, but I said um, the Breslin Center, Michigan State facility. It, it, it's basically since I can remember watching college basketball, um, that's about around the mid-1990s, um, the Spartans have been elite for the most part. They've been consistent um, since 1998. They've won the Big Ten regular season title 10 times. They've won a national championship. Um, I always see them, it feels like, on ESPN, which will not change because we're gonna, mm-hmm. the Big Ten doesn't have the ESPN uh, contract anymore. Um, but there are always that team on a Monday or a Tuesday, you know, when there's three or four games on national TV, they always were playing. Uh, Tom Izzo will finally get to come to Eugene, by the way, um, and coach mm-hmm. in Matt Nat Arena. I was just going to uh, say, I, I, I can't wait to watch Izzo coach a game in person. I can't say I've ever done that. That's going to be really exciting. I have. I, I did do that. I did that this past season oh, uh, when, when Oregon played Michigan State. But it was in Portland in a really dinky, shitty arena. <laughs> uh, <Hey. laughs> the, the War Memorial or whatever it's called. Uh, the Coliseum. Um, yeah, that's where I went. I, I went with I went with Breslin Center. I, I, Assembly Hall would be up there. Uh, but the Chrysler Center where Michigan plays would be up there. A sneaky mm-hmm. one could be Illinois. Um, yeah, That place, that fan base, like they're either all in or they're not. It, it, it could be interesting to see what life is like there. Um, Purdue, this is much like football, what Jared said. Like yeah. you could go through a lot of the, the stadiums and get, get excited about it. Like Minnesota and yeah. seeing how the teams are on the behind the hoops instead of next to the hoops mm-hmm. or is that vanderbilt, I, vanderbilt. Uh, I think it's both vanderbilt i know yeah. for sure I, exactly jared i'm not sure if minnesota does but vanderbilt definitely does but i do know minnesota think, has that like elevated court and it's like yeah. a barn yeah no i think minnesota's i think they sit normally like on the side but it's that elevated surface so they got to take a yeah. giant step up to get on the court go, yeah. go for so fans. Be, let us know let us know go that'll be fans. wild there's a uh, lot of good. I'm glad you mentioned Purdue. Purdue was a sneaky one on my list, but obviously, I think Assembly Hall is way better. So, but yeah. Purdue was up there. Like that's that's a scene, and th- and they've been a good program for years and years. Another one is is Iowa for both men's and women's. You know, that's yep. that's been a good program for both for the last couple of years, both sides. Um, and that's a great little venue too. 
All right. Uh, spring sports. How do we envision spring sports stacking up uh, with their new Big Ten brethren? This is more of a question focused for Jared, but I think we have some other. I was going to say, yeah. This is a Jared question. I mean, Matt and I don't have spring what, sports. What spring sports are you guys going to talk about here? Uh, <laughs> golf, football, track, football, track, tennis, track, track and field, track, golf, track and field, golf, golf, I, golf, I, I, golf. I'll just. I'll be uh, the golf predator this year. Yeah, you, Matt, you should be the golf person. I don't know why you aren't already. You've talked about doing it. I'll just say with track, like Oregon, Oregon will enter and where will they stack up? They, they should enter as, and then they haven't been super successful the last couple of years because there's been some co coaching change. Um, but based upon how they've recruited in that program, it should be the best Big Ten track program, but it also mm -hmm. would be the best track program in pretty much every conference besides the SEC right now um, because the SEC is loaded. But uh, yeah, I think that's the only sport I have really any expertise to speak on. For for baseball, um, I think Oregon in the in the immediate move to the Big Ten it probably becomes one of the better teams in the conference. Um, just over the last couple of years, and what head coach Mark Wazikowski has done for this program and turned it into a real uh, potential perennial powerhouse uh, in the in the West Coast. Um, they're still, you know, they're not as they're not as deep or as 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 rooted as Oregon State is or USC or UCLA, but uh, you know they've only been a program since two thousand and nine, so they're 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 getting there. And a trip to the Super Regionals last year shows how much change and how much <clears throat> excuse me how much improvement they've made in the last handful of years under Waz. Um, so I think that going back into the Big Ten for for Waz, who had a stint as a this, the Purdue head coach for two, three years, something like that. Um, I think that'll be fine. Um, this is not something that that Oregon isn't used to um, in terms of like the cold weather games in February. Um, I'm sure I won't be used to it if I ever make a trip out there in February. Um, but I think that they'll be they'll be just fine. And the nice thing is, is now that Midwest, uh, that North Atlantic, that kind of area where there's a lot of talented baseball players, um, that becomes a recruiting campground. Um, so that's much more talent. Uh, it's a lot more competition. It's teams that they just really haven't ever played in baseball. Uh, you know, it's been, like I said, like they came back as a program after a long hi hiatus and now they get to go play in the big 10 against Ohio state and Michigan and all these other teams, um, storied programs over there. I think it'll be a lot of fun, but overall, I think baseball is going to do well in the big 10. Um, you know, last year Oregon made the Super Regionals. Stanford made the Super Regionals. That's two Pac-12 teams. Not a single Big Ten team won and made it to the Super Regionals. Um, I wouldn't say it's one of the better conferences in America for baseball. I think the Pac-12 was already better. I think USC and UCLA are going to do great. I think UCLA is probably moving in and is just going to overtake the best program in the entire conference. Um, they're just a good powerhouse. They were bad last year, but you know it's UCLA. Um, so I think it'll be good. I, th I think it'll be a lot more competitive. Um, Washington should get a nice little step up. They were good last season. So I'm excited overall for it. Um, I think I think Waz and, and the staff at Oregon are going to be excited as well. Uh, I agree with Jared on baseball. He I would, don't need to. He's the expert here um, on this. Softball, they were they, – the softball team made the Super Regionals last year. Only one Big Ten team did. And I understand that Oregon got swept by Oklahoma State and it really wasn't close. They lost 17 to one combined score over two games. Um, but that being said, like they instantly go into uh, a conference where I'm not going to say they should be the favorite every single year, but they should still be in contention every single year to win the league. You know, UCLA joins as well, which will be the powerhouse school in the, in, in the conference for, for softball. Um, Washington's pretty good at softball as well. Mm -hmm. um, they made the super, re they made the, the college world series. So Very you know, good. a lot of the PAC 12 teams going over to the big 10 from softball will be the better schools. Um, yeah. Track and field Oregon is historically one of the best programs in the country. So they should naturally be one of the best programs in the big 10 um question there is like does the big 10 move the track and field championships to hayward field it's a long distance away but it's the best facility on the, in the country 
It's it's the best, yeah. it's honestly the it's the, it's the player, I mean in terms yeah. of in terms of a specialized venue for track and field it really is the best I would I mean it would be a disgrace if they did I mean I don't expect it to always be in Eugene but the reason yes. there's a reason why the NCAA's are almost they kind of rotate but they're here I don't know every odd year basically so I I mm-hmm. would expect that they'll be out here and um it'll be in inter- I mean there's a couple of weird track things we could get into but yeah I I I would imagine that they would want to put the their conference on display in you i just looked it up the big 10 was in um bloomington indiana this past season um the big 10 championship i i don't know much about track but i i seriously doubt uh any of the other schools in the current big 10 support track and field like the eugene springfield community does whether it's oregon competing or indiana competing um yeah i don't i mean i don't i don't want to come across too hyperbolic but i mean track is this is track town usa for a reason and yes this is like one of the best specialized venues for track like big 10 fans if if you're a track fan if you haven't been out west you'll see what we're talking about with 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 hayward field in terms of like it's it's really recently built it's massive Mm -hmm. and it has all the bells and i mean it has too many bells and whistles probably like it's kind of over the top but um it would be, I think it would be a shame if that's not taken advantage of on an annual year and, and people can complain about that giving Oregon an advantage, but it's track and field. I don't necessarily think that plays a, a huge role necessarily. And, and frankly, Oregon, along with USC, probably figured to be the, the best brands in track and field from the start anyway. Uh, NCAA track championships are at Hayward Field in four, 2024, 2025, and 2026. Um, that's yeah. as far out as they've gone. I also think, yeah. real quick, um, <laughs> golf, the men's and the women's programs will instantly become um, top three teams in the conference. Um, don't know much about lacrosse, but I imagine Oregon will be probably in the middle to bottom tier yeah. of that. That's a northeast sport. Oh, but yeah, and, and they don't even they don't even have a men's lacrosse team here. Yeah, yeah. and the exactly. women's the so, women's team is pretty women's team. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of sports that Big Ten country has that Oregon does not. Um, mm-hmm. Men's lacrosse, wrestling, wrestling. Uh, that could be an o- ice hockey. Uh, mm-hmm. I know the yep. the Oregon club team has been pretty good the last couple of years. Um, I mean, these are all opportunities for Oregon to create more sports, more opportunities for kids. Um, do I see it happening? Probably not. Um, but I do think that the Ducks and UCLA and USC and Washington, for the most part, will have a will have a slight leg up in the spring sports, just due, frankly, to the climate. Yep. Um, there yep. are a lot of programs that in the Midwest are going to have a tough time practicing outdoors for their outdoor sports in the middle of January. Um, but at Oregon, although it's going to be really shitty weather, um, they're going to be fine. <laughs> they're going to have... It's going to be some rain and stuff, but uh, overall, like there's not going to be a foot of snow on the ground. Um, so I think that genuinely is going to help. Um, the other problem is I, where the hell are they going to be playing beach volleyball in Indiana yeah. or Michigan? Um, I think I saw like Nebraska could be built a like an indoor beach indoor? volleyball facility. Yes, <laughs> that's sick. I love that. I actually, I, honestly, that's amazing. And we have to note with volleyball, Oregon is has a pretty solid volleyball program. It will good, not, yeah. It, the Big Ten is the is the big boys of of, of of volleyball. They're kings. Yeah, I'm gonna look this up Queens, real quick. Yeah, Queens. Well, they uh, men's volleyball. That's another uh, alternative that's for, another for a sport to for Oregon to add. Um, there's a lot of them. I don't. I don't really think Oregon's going to be adding any of these sports. Um, well, it's really difficult to do because of Title Nine. It, yeah. Well, that and because you have to, you know, add resources to to make these programs work. Which maybe the extra money from the Big Ten will help with that down the line. But um, I think it's just going to be very difficult. And I don't, I don't think there's a huge market here for some of these. Like no wrestling, I, wrestling you know, was it's a not program. like. We had Oregon had wrestling until they decided to mm. add baseball, and because of that, they also had to add like acro tumbling, which is my point with the women's sports. They'd have to add like yeah, some the title nine would be it'd be, would be interesting. Yeah, um, equestrian team, boom, boom, I like it. Yep, there you go. So 
Yes, that's Nebraska what Baylor did. plays uh, indoor beach volleyball at the Hawks Championship Center. It, it's some training center in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. That is what a lot of, I guess, Big Ten teams do. Is they play beach volleyball indoor. Indoor, huh? I think got to build I, a new facility here. Yeah, I think I've got a new beat. I think I want to go just tour all these indoor beach <laughs> volleyball venues. That sounds fun. That would be a good little little piece. Okay, That'd here's another. Nope. Here's a sport. Here's a sport. Nope. Okay, not to, we're not going to try and get no. too down the rabbit hole here, but rifle. Nebraska has a rifle team. Oh. oh. Hmm. Um. Well, that's something. There's yeah, there's so there's so many team. jokes I'm not saying right now. All right. There's a bowling, yeah, a bowling team? team. They have a bowling team. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine being on scholarship for bowling? What a good life. <laughs> I, I remember in college I was in bowling league and you would just get we just get to drink beer and bowl at like six o'clock on every Thursday, and it was the best class <laughs> I ever took. I think that's the same thing the bowling team does. Yeah. Six do o'clock every Thursday <laughs> is the a pitcher of Coors Light, Miller Light, Miller Light. It's going to be Miller Light because they're in Miller, the, Miller there. Yeah, we, we, I think we were. Uh, what were we drinking? Uh, Rainiers, probably. Probably had like pitcher Rainier. Or uh, uh, yeah. It's Gonzaga. We're weird. Uh, I could just All right. there's Coors Light, man. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Last question. Uh, it's just a random yet cool aspect you like or dislike about or- Oregon joining the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, I I actually. This is probably going to surprise people. I, I, and this is different than the teams because I know there's more travel involved. But I'm actually pretty darn excited about the travel element here. I kind of outlined it earlier, talking about, and this is again specific to football and women's basketball, the two sports I cover. And I don't know how much I'll actually hit the road for women's basketball because I haven't really hit the road too much for women's basketball. Well, in the Pac-12 when the schools are closer, but um, like it's going to be a blast, I think, just to be in different parts of the country. Um, you know, like Salt Lake City is a venue that, or a city that I, I spent a little extra time in um, the last couple of times Oregon's played there. And it's just become one of my favorite places to go. Um, there are going to be places in the Big Ten that probably become similar for me, right? I haven't been to, I probably haven't been to a single city even in, in Big Ten country other than Columbus, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm thinking through it. But, oh, I've been to St. Paul. I've been to, I've got family out in Minnesota, so that'd be the exception. But yeah, I mean, there's just a bunch of part. This is a part of the country that, frankly, somebody who's lived out in the West Coast for, gosh, basically all of it, I haven't been to many of these cities, many, much of this area. So I'm excited to explore. And then kind of a strange part of this, this is something that um, the Oregonians, James Crepe, kind of put on my radar that I actually found to be a, a good point. Longer flights back mean more uninterrupt, uninterrupted time to work on Sundays, which actually could be valuable because I know James is probably going to spend the whole time writing. Gosh, dang it. But, but like it is annoying That's sometimes. Lame. It is expel, but it is annoying sometimes when you get back and you have to like, oh, now I have to sit down to do two hours of riding. Like now I can get home, maybe put on an NFL game, relax, as opposed to putting in more work. I'll just get the work done on the. Floor. Can you actually get work done on an airplane? Like I feel like those seats, like you're such in a weird position where you're like this. Yeah, it depends. I, I'll have to. Plus I, I got to pay for Wi-Fi. I, I was going to say I have to pay for Wi-Fi, and I'll have to um, check with National see if I can pay for a Comfort Plus, so I have a little more space, maybe. Yeah. No, good luck with that. I, um, I, I think for me, the benefit of a long flight is I get to sleep longer. I won't. I'll be more okay. rested well, when well, I land. Well, or yeah, I get to way, watch a full movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't, I don't get I'm to, not um, excited to work. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, let's see. Why am I excited? I mean, I've been very excited to join the Big Ten. Um, I've been trying to pump that on this podcast for seemingly a year now. Uh, you know, as we just talked about, um, Miller Light and bowling are really high on my my tier yeah. list of why Heck I'm yeah. excited to join the Big Ten. Uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm very similar to Eric. I'm you know I'm excited for this fan base to get out of their comfort zone. Um, I'm excited for them to to go and interact on a daily basis, a weekly basis with Penn State fans, Nebraska fans, Wisconsin fans, all of these teams that um, are storied programs with tremendous tradition um, that are going to be just new to everybody. Um, they're excited to go to the new stadiums, uh, excited to meet new people, new beat reporters, new random bars that you go into when you travel, new fans that you strike up a conversation with. Um, I think it's a lot of great uh, opportunities here. 
for Oregon, for USC, UCLA, Washington, the fan bases, the staff, um, their overall, I don't know, uh, like, I guess their, their overall repertoire of like, yeah, I know we were in the Pac-12 for a while, but here we are in the Big Ten. We're here to, we're here to compete. We're here to improve our program's tradition and history. Um, you know, there was, there, for the longest time, you know, Oregon and, and all the teams in the West Coast were, were hit by East Coast bias. Um, and now Oregon is a direct part of the East Coast bias. Um, there may still be some because some games are going to be played on the West Coast late at night. But a majority of the big games that people are going to tune in and watch or is a must watch on Saturday are going to be at like noon Pacific or 9 a.m. Pacific. The whole world is going to be watching. It's just going to be uh, a new viewership and attitude towards Oregon as long as they continue to perform well on the football field. That has never happened. So I think I'm excited about that aspect of it all more than anything else. Uh, bowling and Miller Lite included. <laughs> Uh, for me, it's a. We're gonna see Oregon play on NBC. That at some point that that's has never movie. happened yeah. to my knowledge. Like that, that's wild to me, crazy to think about. Um, and then we're gonna get like Brad Dessler calling Duck football games. I know it's happened a couple times when they played in El Paso for the um, what is that bowl game? Alamo Bowl. The no, that's San Antonio. Um, El Paso. What is Sun Bowl? The Sun Bowl, the right? Sun Bowl. Yeah, I was just. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, Oregon has played in the Sun Bowl a couple times, and Nestler's called. But at some point, we'll get a Oregon versus Ohio State, or Oregon at Michigan, or Michigan at Oregon, and that will be the game of the week for CBS. And you, you know, you, we've traditionally seen the CBS, the theme song, all of that for SEC games. That will be played at some point for Oregon, and that's going to be pretty cool for me. Like just growing up as a kid, watching, you know, when, when every game wasn't on TV, you always knew CBS was going to have a really big game of the, you know, that week. And at some point, Oregon will be on there. We'll see more games from a basketball standpoint on CBS, which is pretty cool. Usually, it's like one or two a year until the tournament. Um, that will happen for Oregon. Uh, so it's just kind of like what a couple of you guys have said of just the newness, the excitement, you know, seeing, getting out of their element, like Jared said, and going out and experiencing new things in the athletic world for Oregon, which would be pretty cool. Things that you just never really assumed would ever happen are now going to happen. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it first. Go ahead. Yeah. One more thing. How excited are we all to go to Rutgers one year? Hmm. I'm excited to go to Rutgers to see everything around the Rutgers football game, but not the actual Rutgers football game. You just mean New York? Yeah, you New get Jersey. to go to New York City. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, that would that it's would in also Jersey, be the, but yes. Yeah, that would be the bigger draw for me as well. I, I am not that is not a trip I I'm actually I'm at Baltimore, like or Maryland, I guess I should say it's not in Baltimore, the but land? Like, Maryland, like that looks that I know that's an area I've spent very little time in that i'm excited to go check out like there are communities on the east coast but um yeah rectors is not sorry rectors fans like that's probably not a program i'm really excited to go check out what is what is your number one transfer or not transfer what is your number one uh destination to go to in the big 10 what are you most looking forward to go to this is we've been to ohio state yeah I, i said this before and i know it's like I, I, I just haven't been to Chicago, and I know like there's not a, a school directly, directly, directly in Chicago, but I think Northwestern's very close. Um, yeah, and it's like basically within city limits, right? I, I, I just know it's in Evanston. Um, I, 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 I've watched the television show The Bear, which has become one of my favorite television shows, and it takes place in Chicago. So I feel like I, I, I really appreciate the city from watching it on television, and now I want to go check it out selfishly. Um, but I, I just, I, there, there's parts of the Midwest I just haven't been to. And, and that's probably the, that's definitely the biggest city there that I haven't been to. I would probably say since we've been to Ohio state already, um, Michigan or Penn state, one of those two, um, happy Valley is like in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania, really hard to get to. Yeah. Um, but it's 
a massive rabid fan base and the town grows when Penn state plays football um, that weekend, which is always pretty cool when you go into those type of settings, Michigan, because of the big house, I know some fans have been there before, but Ann Arbor, a lot of tradition there. They're now good again, like really good. I think they're number two in the AP poll. Um, that will be a fun game. And then I, I think, a a sneaky one for me will probably be Iowa um, okay. from a football perspective because there's that's a that's a fan base that's similar to Nebraska where they're like they always support it even though every year they go eight and four seven and five their offense mm-hmm. is always boring to watch but the, the place is always packed uh, it's a Midwest town and then there's that tradition with the Children's Hospital next door you know, where they all turn around in the third quarter and wave at the kids watching the game. Like that's a cool moment. Um, and probably Wisconsin being the, the next yeah. one camp Randall party town. I I'm going with Wisconsin. I've been to a lot of the right. big 10 campuses just from growing up on the East coast and family vacations, like, Maryland, Michigan, Ohio State. Um, haven't been to Penn State. Uh, don't really want to try to go to Penn State. Like Matt said, it's extremely difficult to get to. I do want to go there eventually, but uh, it's definitely not a, not a high list. I'm going to go Wisconsin. Um, I had a buddy of mine who built, who built ships in Wisconsin. Yeah. He said that Wisconsin is just like land of the best people. Um, so – I'll take his word for it. I've heard Madison is a wonderful place. Um, I'd like to just go to be in Wisconsin because I've never been there. But uh, that's that. I think that's my number one travel destination. It it also fits your uh, your what Bud Light and, and bowling or Coors Light and bowling. I think, I think Miller <laughs> Miller Light. Okay, you're right. I got I got I got to learn. I got to get my beer game up here. I'm not a big beer guy to begin with, but I got I got to figure it out for Midwest country. All right, that's going to do it for us here on the Odds and Audibles podcast. Uh, thank you for listening to the show. We'll be back next week with another podcast diving back into Oregon football as they come off a scrimmage this coming Saturday. Until then, you've been listening to the Odds and Audibles podcast. Talk to you later, folks. Peace.